everybody, welcome back to another week of Duffs to Darts. I am Ed, taking you guys on my weekly journey from a mid-range handicap, definitely a mid-range handicap, we're going to get to that in a minute, down to hopefully a single digit, the best I can, every day, every week, best of my ability, on a budget, on a dime, you guys know the deal. And as always, guys, every week of Duffs to Darts is presented by Sharper Golf. They give me the tools to sharpen up my game. They're going to give you guys the tools to sharpen up your game. As you can see, today we are inside the golf lab where I've been spending a lot of time this week. Temperature has gone down significantly outside, so it's meant that the humidity and the heat in here inside the golf lab isn't nasty, is not hot. I'm actually able to come in here and swing and put, you know, ball to club, get it going. My dog's in here walking around. It's okay with, with him as well. Uh, recording this uh, in the morning before work. Didn't get to it uh, yesterday. Yesterday was Labor Day. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, let's talk about this week in golf. So uh, last time I talked to you guys, I told you I had played last Monday. I uh, lost a lot of balls off the tee. I was striking it pretty well. I was putting well. Uh, but super frustrating with that. So a uh, big part of it was that I kept missing greens and regulation. I was hitting good drives uh, occasionally uh, and I just I wasn't finding greens. So in the middle of the week I went to Pro Circle. That's my spot. Went to Pro Circle with just a 7, 8, 9 iron. Just those three clubs and I went there specifically to work on hitting targets. So I found from the grass tee area as well, not off the mats, I found a couple of different targets that were the correct distance for those clubs that I brought and I just was hitting, you know, at those targets. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you guys that I was just, I was peppering those targets. I was crushing it. I was left. I was right. I uh, was definitely working on trying to, to shot, shape the ball in there as well. Kind of two, two for one practice. I uh, was hitting the targets a lot, striking the ball well, not a lot of duffs off the grass, but you know, that's, that's why you got to hit off, hit off turf, you know, instead of mats whenever you can. Mats are great for practice, mats are great to work on things, but if you can hit off a of grass, it's always best. So I did that. Beautiful divot lines as well. Tremendous. And then uh, weekend came, and uh, it was my daughter's birthday this weekend. So there was a lot of stuff going on with that. All day Sunday was spent doing um, stuff for my daughter. We went to this place called the Sugar Factory in Rosemont, Illinois, and spent the most ridiculous amount of money on burgers and milkshakes that I've ever spent in my life. Um, it's an experience. If you've ever heard of it or seen one, it's a one and done. I wouldn't ever go back. I've had better burgers and I've had better milkshakes for far less money. We're in the triple digits, guys, for how much money I had to spend at this place. But she felt happy. She felt like a princess. She had a great birthday. She was all dressed up and whatnot. Uh, her best friend came with her. So you got to make memories for the kids, right? Uh, just before that happened, though, very end of the week, I want to say it was Friday. I got a delivery, came to the door. Nice long box. It was the brand new driver from Sub 70. The brand new Sub 70 driver was at the 949. Did you guys want to see it? You guys want to see it since you're here real quick? I'll give you one second. One second. Right there. Sub 70 head cover. Right there. Sub 70 949. I'm sorry, 849. I was way off. 849 Pro. That's, that's what the uh, name of this driver is. Uh, this came and I did the unboxing for it, which I'll have the full unboxing on the channel um, probably this week. I'll get, probably get to that. Uh, I've got a uh, Riptide even flow shaft on here. And um, so I got that, did the unboxing, and I wasn't planning to take it out until tomorrow, which is Wednesday, but I got a phone call. Well, not a phone call, I got a text. I got a text from a, a dear friend of mine, somebody in the golf business, that if you've been watching Dust of Darts for years, you've heard me talk about him. Uh, I've talked about him earlier this year. His name is Michael Verska. He's with Callaway um, Golf. He used to be with Wilson. This guy is a golf club genius. Like he, The engineering, MOI, how clubs work, how building a club works. He's the, uh, 
think the head of fitting, player development, something like that, uh, at Callaway. Uh, so we met when he was um, uh, right after he I think he left Wilson. Um, but he's you know he's in Illinois. We met, uh, talked a bunch on Twitter, uh, built up a little bit of a friendship and a relationship there. He was in town uh, for the weekend. And he shot me a text. He said, hey, I'm free to go play some golf on Monday. You open? I didn't have any plans, but we made them real quick. So my wife, I kind of mentioned that he was in town. She gave me a look. She's like, go ahead and have fun. See you when you get back. So thank you, babe. Amazing wife. Super supportive. So uh, we went out. We played at Bittersweet Golf Course in Gurney, Illinois. I haven't played this course since I was like a 20-something handicap. And again, handicap, we're going to come back to that. Haven't played it since I was like a 20-something handicap. I lost like 50 balls when I went there that day. Not 50, but probably probably like 15. It was a lot. Uh, it was my dad and I kept you know finding the woods, finding the water, couldn't find fairways. I was not a very good player. Not not at all. There was very few good shots I'd hit that day. Um, but we went and we played. We had a 6.40 a.m. tee time. We were supposed to be paired up with two other guys, but they didn't show up. Public golf course, public tee time. They're booked up back to back to back to back. 6.40 came. They weren't there. We went off. We played. There were two walkers in front of us, and these guys, they had to have been... They're, they're easily single-digit players. They're probably scratch or plus because they were walking, and we never saw them. Like, after the first tee, they, they were gone. We never we barely saw them. Um, so we played Bittersweet, and same story, same song and dance, not finding fairways, not um, keeping the ball in play. The misses uh, were... Or just due to me leaving the club face open. So I was hitting the ball. I was striking it, but I wasn't closing the face enough. So it was just open a little bit at impact, leaving the balls to get just pushed to the right. They weren't slicing. One, one did, but they weren't slicing. I didn't have the hooks real bad. Um, I did hit some really solid drives, though. The sub-70 driver did come out to play on a couple of the holes. And I did crush one drive, I want to say about 300 yards. I'm going to get the exact number on my shot scope. Um, when I checked it, it said it was 300 yards So on the watch. So uh, that, that driver pops. It goes. Uh, and then I had uh, my personal best in birdies in a round. So I had three birdies in the round. Uh, I've never done more than two in a round. So and two of those birdies were bombs. Bombs. One on the first hole and then w one on like the sixth or seventh hole or something like that, another one on the back nine where I reached, uh, just missed a par five and two. I was putting off the fringe for eagle, just missed the eagle putt, and then I tapped in for birdie. So, um, due to losing about four golf balls again, ended up shooting a 92, I wanna say, 92 or 93. Very disappointing, because I, I wanna be in the 80s, and I should be if I would stop losing the ball and play. Which takes us to the harsh, harsh reality that is, also make extra lights over the top, that's okay. Harsh, harsh reality that is my personal index is not where I want it to be. A lot of pressure I'm putting on myself to obviously get it down, trying to squeeze everything in. The first year we did duffs to darts, I was going into the office and I was hitting um, birdie balls or practicing golf every day on my lunch break and it's just I don't, I don't really do that at home well with my wife and I working from home there's always something I have to do we, something we have to do I should say with the kids and whatnot so I finally bit the bullet I went to the CDGA Chicago uh, CGDA I think it's Chicago Golf District Association whatever whatever it is for Illinois I went into the Illinois website and I paid my $40 membership fee for my official USGA handicap from uh, the USGA for Illinois. And I plugged in all my scores that were applicable, that I was allowed to plug in uh, for um, going all the way back, I think, to October of last year, I think is when I did it. And then it hits fall scores where it doesn't let you put in there. Early spring, it didn't let you put in there. And I plugged in all my scores, and I am currently sitting at a 15.7 index. Not at all where I want to be. And if you've ever played golf with me, a couple of you guys on here have, you see the shots on the vlogs. The skill set is there. The problem is finding, getting the ball in play. 
Keeping the ball in play off the tee, it's been an issue that I've fought off and on for years. It's kind of come back the last several rounds, which has really pushed my score into the 90s where I don't want it to be. Uh, even playing with Verska yesterday, he's, you know, he's, he said that what I know is that the skill set is there, the way I putt, the way I chip, the way I'm able to strike some irons and wedges, I really shouldn't be where I am. But if you don't keep the ball in play, guys, you're not going to shoot low scores. You're going to get penalties. you got to eliminate those penalties. Otherwise, you're never going to get better. So we're working on that. As I said, I had some really solid drives, some not-so-great drives. Missed some greens in regulation. Um, but you know, th that is what it is. So where are we for this coming week? What are we doing? So tomorrow, we, my wife and I have an appointment in the afternoon or early afternoon, so I took the entire day off because as you guys know, I've got a shoot ton of uh, vacation time to use up before my time is up at the end of the month. So we have an appointment. I gotta be back by like 11. So as soon as my kids go to school, I'm gonna go play a very quick nine holes at uh, Boom. No camera, we're not gonna do a vlog. This is gonna be simply a round to, to focus on every single shot. The goal of this round is to execute every single shot with a pre-shot routine. Everyone, we're going to breathe. We're going to think about our shot. I, a lot of times I like to just kind of talk out loud to myself about what I want to do. We're going to think about it. We're going to stay positive. And the goal is to, you know, have a good round and to, you know, try to lower that handicap. It's just going to be nine holes and we're not, we don't have time for 18. And then there won't be anything this weekend other than just practice. So there we go. And uh, next Monday, I've got the meeting with Tour Edge that I'm going to be going on to Batavia, as I talked about last week. So we're going to go uh, see uh, Tour Edge on Monday. So we won't be playing golf that day, but we'll definitely do some golf stuff. And then uh, throughout the week, the golf lab where I'm at right now, a lot of, a lot of these guys getting hit. Uh, irons, long irons. I'm trying to move some things around in here. I got to adjust the impact screen right behind me. I want it to go a little bit lower so I can hit some uh, drivers in here because I have the room to swing, but because the impact net right there it isn't low, the way it comes off the face, it's a short distance. The driver doesn't have enough time to get up. So it's hitting the net. I want it to hit that impact screen so that way we are not having any problems. So that's that. We're gonna do more uh, with this guy, more with the sub 70 driver. This is gonna be in play again, and I do have the shot scope tags on here so I get some data on uh, how I'm hitting this for the, those two rounds. Do some more stuff on this. I gotta put a phone call into Gary Shastel, who's over at Pro Circle in uh, Spring Grove. That's my, that's my preferred driving range spot. That's my club fitter guy. Put a call into him and see if we can get this guy on the flight scope head-to-head uh, -head with my current driver that he fit me for a few years back. So we'll see what's going on with that. All right, guys. That's it. That's all we got for this round of Duff to Darts. If you guys have been watching this long, I really appreciate all the support. Some of you guys have been on the lives that I've been doing after rounds and after practice sessions. So if you guys are still here right now and you're not already, hit the subscribe train. Just, just click that subscribe train right there. It's floating across the screen. It's going to the bottom. Click that. You're going to love it. You love being part of this channel. You love being part of the adventure. You know, your eyes' own uh, handicap uh, pursuit is going. The more you play, the lower you're going to get your handicap, as long as you're working on the right things. That's it for this week, guys. Until next time. Keep grinding. I forgot one thing when I was doing Duffs of Arts. When we play bittersweet, hole 16, I want to say, the green, well, let's just say the greenskeeper is a big fan of the U.S. Open. Here's the clip. See, that's just, that's just unfair. Your, your pace was perfect on it. Well, it stopped by the hole. Yeah. That's why you don't put a pin on a three or four percent grade. V-Man, please explain why you don't put a pin on a three percent grade. This is at least three percent. Here's why. I'm going to miss this one, and we're going to see what happens. So that is a lot of dimple.
<laughs> That's why you like the 3% grain. That's why you bank it in. All right, guys, that's it. Roll the, roll the credits again. We're done. We're, we're, we'll talk to you later. We're over.